pleasure to introduce Travis Tierney, uh, who will be speaking on a uh, feasibility safety study using transcranial magnetic resonance image guided focus ultrasound in the management of benign centrally located intracranial tumors, which require clinical intervention in pediatric and young adult subjects. I think your talk's over. That, that, that title wasn't <laughs> thought of by me. That was a, the FDA's title, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm almost out of time. Um, um, this, this is BT005, which is the um, uh, first um, pediatric brain tumor trial. It's an ablation trial done at uh, Nicholas Children's Hospital, which has become a sports hospital like so many hospitals in Florida. This was originally Miami Children's Hospital, and we did the study in conjunction um, with uh, Inside Tech. I was the PI for the initial part of this study, which was generously funded by the Focused Ultrasound Foundation of Virginia. Uh, we obtained an FDA IDE um, within 30 days, uh, one cycle, which was just astounding to me. And that's really a testament to the um, compatibility with which the uh, regulatory group at Insight Tech works with the FDA. Um, I'm here today as much to update you on where we're at as to ask for your help. Um, the clinicaltrial.gov identifier is there. It includes all of the inclusion and exclusion criterion. Uh, recruitment for this trial has been slow. We've done four cases in two years with a remit of 10 cases, so we need some help. Uh, everything I'm gonna discuss today is off-label use of the Insight Tech Exablate 4000 device. Neither I nor my um, uh, collaborators have any um, uh, conflict of interest that's commercial. Uh, just a word on the rationale for pediatric um, neuro-oncology. Um, we try to limit um, ionizing radiation in kids as much as possible. For example, getting um, fast scan MRIs in lieu of CT scans to look at the ventricles, et cetera. And we know from uh, the, the classic historical cases uh, done in post-World War Japan that there's no statistically significantly low dose of ionizing radiation that can be given to humans. That's the rationale that's motivated us. The FDA helped us not only design our long title, but lengthen the, the follow-up time of uh, my uh, study by over a year. Uh, they also did some very interesting things that I think were quite good. They included three cohorts uh, for safety. They wanted me to find uh, patients that were uh, 18 to 22 and then go to the Data Safety Monitoring Board and proceed down to 12 to 22. We're open now from 12 to 22. If we do one more patient, we'll be open for the full range of the study, which is down to eight. That lower age limit was set by a theoretical bound of the diploic space and an idea about uh, decreased sound transmission below that. We've been restricted to WHO1 tumors, and I should say really WHO1 looking tumors. This does not need to be histologically biopsied if they're classically mnemonic. Say, for example, a tuberous sclerosis patient with a subependymal giant cell astrocytoma. Uh, there's a whole bunch of inclusion and exclusion criterion, but the one I really want to draw your attention to is that prior craniotomy is okay. So if you have a redo case um, that you'd like me to look at, I'd sure like to look at it. I'm just going to present our home run and then our strikeout case. Uh, the first case, actually the second case that we did was a 22-year-old woman with a history of gelastic seizures. Um, gelastic seizures are associated with uh, behavioral oppositional disorder if it's severe, and she certainly had that, was being maintained on reserpidone and uh, several um, anti-epileptic medications. We took her to the um, OR for laser interstitial thermal therapy and managed to uh, put a hole in the, the, the um, hematoma, which is here. You can see the laser cavity, but she was not rendered seizure-free. Um, I discussed many options with her, including gamma knife and repeat laser therapy. She talked to the first patient that we did, which was also a hematoma remnant case, and elected to undergo um, a focused ultrasound. We did this under general anesthesia, and I think that's important. Um, we used uh, high energy. Uh, patients typically wouldn't tolerate the number of sonications that we had to give to complete this. Uh, this is an example of one uh, sonication run where you can see that we were uh, just above the um, laser cavity here. That's the uh, spot, that's the spot size. And what we attempted to do was not to remove the hamartoma, but disconnect it from the base of the hypothalamus, a real classic disconnection seizure surgery. I think we achieved that. These are nice images that John Snell helped me put together, which shows the uh, number of sonications that were done. Um, we started um, out laterally, and we worked our way medially. 
in, this, in the sagittal plane. We started posteriorly and worked our way um, anteriorly, essentially disconnecting that uh, hamartoma from the uh, base of the brain. Uh, she spent uh, one night in the ICU, transferred to the floor, and then went home on a short steroid taper and has been seizure-free now for 12 months. So we have Engel class control one. We had no neurological um, uh, um, ab um, compromise. She had no endocrine dysfunction measured on an endocrine panel. Uh, she had, had no metabolic problems. In other words, she didn't gain weight, which is very classic after even endoscopic resections. And most importantly, she didn't have um, any cognitive abnormalities. In fact, her um, oppositional defiance disorder went away. This case is probably even more important because um, we struck out. Uh, it was a 19-year-old boy with a history of tuberous sclerosis maintained on Everolimus, which is an mTOR inhibitor. Uh, this has become standard of care. It's thought to decrease the progression of tumor uh, intracranially and extracranially. And you can see that this boy had a, a rather large um, subependymal giant cell astrocytoma. He also had very bad mouth ulcers and wanted to come off of the drug. And in conjunction with his neurosurgeon and his treating team in California, we decided to try focused ultrasound. Of course, we were very worried about those two things. And we um, excluded them. Uh, these are calcium flecks that are all, often within these um, uh, tumors. Uh, we lost about 200 elements. The upshot is we really weren't able to get heating, and we often saw um, acoustic cavitation. This was a very long case because we paused and imaged in between. We saw no bleeding, but all we really did was manage to take out a little bit of the tumor up here in the superior quadrant near the foramen of Monroe. We didn't approach down here. We could not get near the calcium fleck. Um, the take-home messages that I want to leave you with is that um, focused ultrasound um, with the uh, standard 650 device is certainly capable of treating subcortical epilepsy associated with tumors that aren't highly calcified. Uh, cavitation is very likely, I think, near ependymal surfaces in calcium. And I'd appreciate seeing a virgin hamartoma case and any subependymal giant cell astrocytoma cases that um, anyone would wish to, um, to show me. Those are my contact details. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful work. We have time for one question. I think you've answered all the questions. Beautiful work.